Hello, hi, I'm back, back again. Today, we're going to talk about something really that was really serious at the time, and it's now just really hysterical to me, um, and that people ask me about all the time, it still gets brought up. Um, and I am, of course, talking about my infamous near-death experience where I fell out of my aerial rigging um, and luckily very narrowly escaped breaking my neck. Hi, I'm Frankie Patel, award-winning stripper, showgirl, and spicy content creator. And frankly, I can't wait to tell you all about it. Basically when this happened, it went viral overnight, essentially. So I'm going to recreate the makeup look that went viral because it was the makeup that went viral, which I find hysterical because I'm like, that's the worst I've ever done, that makeup. I don't think it looks good at all. But the reason it went viral is because of the makeup. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it, but I think I'm gonna try and like elevate it or like do it with my better skills now because just looking at it, I have so many questions for my past self. I have so many questions. So we're gonna do it. Um, and it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna grab some supplies. Oh, pirate hoops. That's a definite yes. I'm gonna get some massive lashes. I thought I had more massive lashes than this. Have I put them somewhere else? That seems like an oversight. So we're basically doing a massive fuck off glittery cut crease. Can I say hello? Yeah. Oh, you've got so fat. You're a beast. Say hi. This is Padme. Oh, a sweet baby, but also demon. Right, fuck off. We are going to tell you the story of a girl who had a big fuck up and that now is viral on the internet to this day for it. I don't have the palette that I used to do this with. I used to use the Kylie Burgundy palette. Um, the Too Faced one, hot take. I hate this. There's no freaking pigment in this. I said what I said. I really like the Anastasia Norvina palettes because they have like 40 colors. And as you can see, this one has died a death. When was this? 2018. Okay, let me take you back to a time when uh, COVID didn't exist. This is the legendary sprays. Um, what I'm gonna do now is my brows. I'm gonna carve them out a little bit more than I normally would because in this photo they're like remember back in 2018 when bold eyebrows were still kind of in I definitely need to do a story time about my whole showgirl journey from like start to finish and in 2018 I did Miss New World and this happened that weekend that it finished so I'm doing this hectic competition um cherry pop wins just gorgeous I love you cherry I miss you so cherry wins I'm exhausted because Miss New World goes for five days straight. I got through to the finals for the first time ever um, and I came sixth. So I did my two shows that night and keep in mind I've already performed four times, five times by now this week. So I'm just wrecked. Then that weekend I um, had my normal show slots booked and um, I remember thinking like before I went on to do my 15 minute show I was like, I'm not feeling right. Like, I just feel really weird, which is something I should have thought about more as an aerialist because it was an aerial show. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I think I'd only been stripping for like three years. I was like 20, fuck, 2018, six years ago. I was 24, I was a little baby. So I go out to do the show and it's my Jack Sparrow. Pirates the Caribbean show, which is one of my favorite ever performances to do. Um, I swear to God, Panky. Sorry, a cat has invaded. Frankie, you can sit down, but you have to be quiet. Yeah, shh, shh. All right, bye. Yeah, it's one of my favorite acts to do. It's really fun. There's like a lot of pantomime and comedy in there. And it's, it's just a really fun act to do. It has an aerial anchor in it. Now, when I learned, my aerial anchor routine. I did it on um, a fellow like circus artist's professionally made aerial anchor. And the thing about 
aerial anchors or any aerial apparatus in general is that it's supposed to be heavy. It's supposed to have a weight to it so that when you do a move where you are pushing your body away from the hoop or the anchor or anything, there's like resistance or at the very least, my first apparatus had that resistance and that weight to it and my second one didn't. When I had my own one fabricated, I had it made lighter because I was traveling with it and I was like, it doesn't need to be that heavy. But I also didn't know like why it was heavy. And I'd just done Sex Bow and Miss Nude Australia on the first one, the heavy one. I did perform on the new anchor that week. Um, but like I said, we're still getting used to it. And by this point, exhausted. Um, so anyway, I go, I go to the show and as I go up into the aerial anchor, I think to myself, I'm spinning the wrong way. That's uh, the first time it's ever happened to me. I always spin to the right to go into my like routine. Now, because I'm spinning the other way, I'm already thrown off. It feels violently different. Anyone that's like a dancer or anything, if you've always done something on one leg and then you suddenly have to do it on the other side, you're like, what? and I'm doing it on the other side with absolutely no preparation. So then I'm spinning the wrong way. And for some of my moves, that's fine. For the move that I fell in, not fine. Um, I was doing like a split that I eventually let go both my hands with, of, with both my hands. And I'm just holding with my thighs. When you're swinging one way, my legs are like moving with the turn against the, 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 basically they're pressing against it. When you're swinging the other way, your body weight is leading into the turn. So I'm like not, I don't have as much resistance there either. And anyway, basically long story short, the anchor was so light that it slipped out from underneath me. And I was so tired, I didn't notice it was happening until it was too late. Um, and that's one of the reasons like, I'm really careful about when I perform now and I will cancel shows. Um, which people don't seem to, do, obviously don't receive very well. Like if you've got tickets to a cancelled show, it's a really shit. But I'm also someone who works with chronic illness and I want to do the best show possible and the safest show possible. And I'm a human being, sometimes that's not possible. We're going to add in some brown to my eyes while I'm telling you this story. I fall off this anchor and hit the deck really fucking hard at midnight on a Saturday night with like, I want to say like a hundred people in the club at least. So one of my friends gets to me first and like, li like faster than security, faster than anyone realized what was going on. She, because she's also an aerialist. So she's like, she fell. That's not supposed to happen. And I'm just like, get me off the stage, get me off the stage, get me off the stage. And I shouldn't have said that because then of course they're like, of course, we don't know what's happening. Let's get you off the stage. So we move me upstairs. And at this point I'm just in shock. Like I'm, I don't, I wasn't feeling pain by this point. All I knew was that I fell and I felt like that was a bad accident. That wasn't minor. That was a big, like I fell like probably two and a half meters onto the back of my neck while moving um so it wasn't it was like a, a big fall anyway we get me upstairs and one of the managers has to cut my bikini off me because i'm like this arm's useless something's wrong here so she had to cut my bikini off me and we like wrap me in a towel and paramedics got there oh that was delightful paramedics got there really freaking quickly um probably because they knew i fell from height onto the back of my neck so they get there and immediately put morphine in my arm. We didn't find out till later that I'm allergic to morphine. <laughs> and they put the full neck brace on me, the back brace on me, everything. And then it's two girls, it's two, it was two women um, paramedics and they were like, we have to get you downstairs and this club is full of stairs. And they were like, we have to tell you now like, we can't tell from here if you've broken your neck or if you've damaged any of your spinal cord. When we move you, we have to be really careful um, because we want to avoid damaging your spinal cord if there is anything there. But 
you know, like we have to walk you out of the club basically. So they were kind of saying without saying like, if you haven't already done damage and there is something there that the accident caused, walking you out of the club could cause you further damage. And I'm like, great, cool, tight. Slowly walked me down two flights of stairs into Northbridge at midnight on a Saturday. And then a the fucking drunk guy walks, this is the funniest part of this whole thing, walks out of the front of the club with two fake like funny money from the strip club and tucks them, tries to tuck them into the neck brace. At which me and the three, the paramedics are like, what's happening in this day? Like what? Why are you touching her? She's in a fucking neck brace. Me, we go in the ambulance, we get to the hospital and I get like triaged and put through pretty much straight away. Um, and they're like, right, we're gonna send you for scans. I went and got like, I think they probably did every possible scan they could do. Um, and because it was a Saturday night, we had to wait a while to find the results, which like after being told you might've broken your neck is quite scary. I'm having a bad time. And because it was 2018, I posted about it in my meme group and I posted a photo just being like, is a photo of me looking utterly ridiculous in the ER. Um, please send me memes. And like within three hours, the thread was full, not of memes, but of hundreds of women being like, I wish my makeup looked this good when I was ruining my life. And I was like, thanks. The nurses and doctors and whoever come, hoops ever come back and they're like, okay, great news. Your neck's not broken. Woo, party. However, bad news, your collarbone's pretty fucked up. Um, so it turns out I landed on the back of my neck when I fell, but I landed slightly to the left, like between where my shoulder blade meets my neck, basically. So because of that, my collarbone took all the impact, which is a really good thing because it meant my neck didn't. And while this is all going on and I'm sitting in this hospital, can't eat because they keep thinking they're going to take me to surgery, in pain because everything they give me I'm allergic to and it's therefore not working. Someone from this mean group contacts me and she's like, hey girl, I work for Pedestrian TV, which is like a online news outlet in Australia. Can I write an article about this? Because it's just so funny to me that like you had this accident and your makeup looked perfect, which again, really debatable. Look at that photo. And I was like, well, I'm high as tits on painkillers. Do what you want, bro. Live your life, bestie. Not knowing that, like, I just thought it would be one funny article and, like, whatever, move on. Not knowing <laughs> what was about to happen to me. Um, and then that went viral. And people were losing their shit over the, just the fact that my makeup looked good while I was having such an accident. And I was like, I, I never knew my makeup was such a sleigh, but thank you. This makeup is turning out to be a bit of a sleigh. I'm just dunking black into that pocket to like deepen it up a little bit. I'm gonna go a little bit more hardcore with the black than I used to, I think, cause I'm a little bit less scared of it now. So yeah, long story short, it basically went viral. And this is still on the weekend when I'm in the hospital waiting for surgery, I'm getting messages and like notifications. Like, girl, have you seen that the Daily Mail UK just published an article about it. And I'm like, how, why is this happening to me? Because by this point I've realized not everyone I know knows that I'm a stripper. And then now there's photos of me circulating internationally. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Um, luckily no one like grandparents or anything found out and my immediate family already knows by this point what I do. So it worked out fine, but I was also like, ah, panic? On top of surgery panic? I forgot to put glitter on my eyelids. It's kind of the most important part. So I would do gold glitter in this crease. Sometimes I would use powder and then glitter and then real glitter. I think I'm gonna take that approach today to mimic what I used to do. Um, but probably do it with slightly more skill. Still to this day, 
people come up to me and are like, are you the girl that had that accident? Or like, how, people will ask me now how I'm healed after the accident. And I'm like, well, it was six years ago. Um, stay relevant. Um, but yeah, I'm fine. I've got a gnarly fucking scar. I was also a bit of an idiot. My original scar was only this big. Um, and I think I stretched it because I went back to work so soon and I was being really physical with my shoulder. Um, so that wasn't great, but I've got a nice cute little scar, um, and a great story to tell, I guess, about that time I got famous on the internet for fucking myself up royally. And it took me a little bit to get back on to doing aerial apparatus for like for a couple of months there. I was like, mm, I'm not sure about it. And I had to like force myself to get up onto the apparatus, like barely off the floor with a mat beneath me and just stand there and hold on, uh, stand, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, how do we feel? No, we're gonna sit down. And then I'd get off and I'd like sit there for 20 minutes. It was a process to get back on because I did have PTSD. And still to this day, like when I first did aerials, they would pull me like 10 meters into the air over sex bow because I wanted that. I was like, yeah, how high's the winch go? Send me all the way up, whatever, let's fuck it up. Um, and I would obviously get like, ooh, because I'm afraid of heights, why am I doing this to myself? But I wouldn't get like true fear. And even now to this day, when I go really high up or I'm like above the hoop on the strap or doing something a bit more dangerous that I'm not as comfortable doing, that I haven't rehearsed as much, I still get a little, ooh. I'm not going to blend this too much because I really didn't blend it at all back in the day. Um, I would then carve out again on top of that. I'm not going to do that because I'll look like an insane person. It's going to look stupid as fuck anyway until I put the rest of my makeup on. So, so anyway, this is the makeup that supposedly everyone thought was flawless, which I see many flaws. I'm not judging you, I'm just saying. I'm gonna take some of this Stila liquid glitter and pack it on. And this kind of makes the whole glitter with the powder superfluous. So I don't know why I did this, but I'm staying faithful to what I did. Now the problem with this glitter is that it then gets wet and blends up into the crease. And that pissed me off so much as well and that's one of the reasons those creases look insane in that photo is because they've disintegrated i also cried most of my makeup off like it's it's kind of wild to me that this is this is what i looked like after i'd been crying at least the first three times all right glitter 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 and this is the hard bit i haven't done this in ages i'm gonna put duo on my eyelid just this is an eye safe glue but this is a bit wild though. Um, okay, so I've patted that down. I'm gonna try and clean some of the duo off my brush and then I'm gonna get just a fat serving of glitter and pat it on exactly where you just put the glue. Bam. That's insane. That's so insane. That's so stupid, I hate it. Fair. It doesn't have to be too precise because again, we're painting for the back wall, but you do want it to be like clean. I think the biggest thing I forget to do is look out of the mirror at what it looks like far away. These are the foundations I use when I'm on stage. The revolution, look at the state of her. The revolution, oh, look at the state of her. The revolution, how many times can I say revolution? Revolution IRL filter. And I get them in, they're matte, they're really full coverage, you're wonky, and I get them in multiple colours. So my most tan is actually a 12, this is a 10, this is a 6, and then this is a none. Um, they're vegan, they're cheap as shit, they're like $18, um, they're amazing. Because that's a normal amount of foundation to have on your hand. And honestly, when I'm doing it like this, I don't even bother like mixing it properly, I just, you just go. You just gotta go for it. I think the thing that everyone was gagged with when I fell was not just the eye makeup, but the fact that all my foundation was still on. 
they had to get me makeup wipes like not even baby wipes i had to ask one of the nurses if she had makeup wipes and she actually did and i was like please can i have a couple of makeup wipes because it it wasn't moving even with the baby wipes like especially the glitter the glitter was just moving around stage wise especially when i'm doing water bowl i'll bake my whole face really aggressively so i'll use this little triangle or a beauty blender to really pack it in which stops it from moving and stops the sweat from like spreading your makeup as much i'm not going too crazy because i want the look of how hardcore it would be but i don't necessarily like need to waste product or fuck my entire skin up so because it's pirates and it's gold tones i'm gonna add this orangey blush this is a nars one in truly a state it's called taj mahal look at her a mess disgusting it's fucking what it is and i'm gonna do the higher part of the back of my cheekbone again this is gonna give it depth look at that shimmer too that's so nice then i'm gonna get this rosy pink this isn't as pink as my old pink blush was i used to have a really really pink one like ferocious pink and that was fierce. But I think for this particular makeup, it's not necessary. I'm really going way too hard now. I've taken this too far. This is the best highlighter I've ever used in my life. It is a religious experience and I think everyone should own this. This is the Mecca Cosmetica Enlightened Powder. I've had this for an obscenely long time and I've only just hit pan in the center of it. Like these last me yonks and I use them. So I'm gonna go in with a small brush and I'm gonna do highlight up here. When I do my regular fantasy makeup, I do a little bit of a highlight with a different color to make it like, ooh. But today, because this is quite a cool gold tone, I'm gonna just use this because it should be enough to open my eye up and I'm going to do it right in the corner and a little bit underneath again like I would do more in that inner socket than I normally would if I was going into the club because it's going to make it pop do my little cupid's bow and doot 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 on the nose and then we're going to do just your regular highlighter I would use a much more hardcore brush than this if I was on stage, but because we're just next to the camera, you guys don't need me to like completely lose, lose all sense of sanity. All right, let's do some brown. That will save us. Yeah, this will save us. So I'm just gonna do some brown to join up the bottom to the top. Okay, I'm going to go for a bigger eyeliner than I used to. Let me, what did we do? It was a pretty big eyeliner, actually. It just didn't have, like, the tip of it. The cat wing is not, it's very thick the whole way around. Let's see if I can do this better. Now, again, because this is such a big makeup, we can't just do a little bitty. That's not going to work. She needs to be out here. Now I'm just going to draw out my tip, keeping in mind I want to link the bottom up from the under eye so it can't be too aggressively this way. And then I'm going to just pull the thinnest little bit back in. And that's how you get it really sharp. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side and we'll come back because I don't think I'm going to do anything funny between now and then. Where are we? This is really weird to have this much makeup on and then no hair done. Come on. Oh dear. I think these are slightly nicer than the the old lashes I had for this look were like quite when I when I did this, they, I was wearing like quite bulky lashes. These are a bit more like triangly and fluttery. I put a lip on and I'm going to tell you guys about the lip stuff that I use. So I have been a long-term devotee of lip scents. 
um, which is this random, like, okay, this has gone off. That's definitely got to go in the bin. So random, like, um, I think the company itself is called Senegents. I think this stuff, I don't know if this is any good anymore. This stuff might have gone bad. But most matte or long stay, long wear lipsticks still smudge, in my opinion. Um, especially when, like, I don't have a break in between numbers when I'm doing the big show. And my quick change time, I think the longest we had last season was two and a half minutes. And that's to go into another full costume and get back on stage and do aerials. So in that time, we've got to get me out of the previous costume into the next costume. I'm sweaty. So we're toweling me down, we're fanning me. We're trying to give me water. I'm trying to put grip on my hands for aerials. My window to do that is two and a half minutes and I'm, I'm not really doing anything that time. I'm just kind of standing there being tugged by people around me. But the other thing is most of the time I'm breathing fire or eating fire. And when you're breathing fire, the, the fuel that you're using very often will strip off your lipstick or make it go really oily and act like a makeup remover and suddenly it's everywhere. And I know this from experience, from doing this for years. So the thing about lip scents is I like to say it's blowjob proof. Um, it's really weird to apply and people always laugh at me when I have it on because once you have a layer on, you have to let it dry and you can't let your lips touch because then it like transfers onto itself. And I can't not talk for two minutes. So I'll be talking like this while I'm trying to do a lipstick. And people are just like, what the fuck are you doing? Just shut up. This is starting to give like Jazz a Stedford. Without hair on, this looks ridiculous. I love it. So this is the final look. I think I surfed kind of, to be honest. Ignore my hair, it's filthy. Um, and ignore, look at her. She doesn't fit anymore. Um, and this is disgusting because as I, this act used to be after Lilith. So I would come off covered in fake blood and then this would happen. It, I mean, it looks l like Johnny's did in the movies. It's filthy. So I think compared to the original, I think I did a really good job. The eyebrows are a little stronger than I would normally wear right now but in terms of a stage makeup it's kind of a happy medium between what i used to do and then something a bit more glamorous and pretty and like ladylike um i think my skills have just improved a lot in six years which you would hope as have my tits i hope you like this video i hope you liked hearing about the accident i am fine i am recovered um just make sure that if you are ever doing aerials you always are using the correct apparatus that has been approved by a qualified instructor or someone who has a lot of expertise in aerials. Um, make sure you're not performing tired and just take care of yourselves. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something from the makeup. If you have any requests, let me know. Um, and if you have any rum, help a girl out. Love you guys.